Welcome to the City of Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment meeting for September 16, 2021. The agenda documents and minutes are located at okc.primegov.com slash public slash portal and also outside of this uh, chamber. For anyone wishing to speak today, hopefully previously notified staff, if you're the applicant, you'll be acknowledged to speak at the appropriate time. If you're not the applicant and would like to speak, hopefully you've already filled out one of the white forms that's available outside and delivered that to staff. And if you've not done that already and you'd like to speak uh, and you're not the applicant, you would want to do that at this time. We will call the case and then I will recognize the applicant or the applicant's representative to speak. We will then recognize any supporters and any protests and then we will close with the applicant speaking. Public comment will then be closed unless specifically reopened by me or another board member. The board will then deliberate and vote. For speakers other than the applicant, please limit your comments to three minutes. Consistent with the city's official proclamation, city employees are required to wear a mask during this proceeding and everyone else is strongly encouraged to wear a mask, which uh, are available outside if you didn't bring one. If several people have the same or similar comments, please respect the time of the board and the other applicants and we ask that you designate one speaker to address the concerns of a group. Those individuals will be given more than three minutes if needed and will be and other people will be allowed to supplement that information if necessary. If you arrive after your item has been heard or if you have a different matter to raise with the board, you'll be allowed to speak under citizens to be heard uh, in the agenda. Board members will be allowed to ask questions and make comments at any time during the meeting. Please do not interrupt board member members while they are speaking because we need a clear record and it makes the meetings go by much faster. Before you be begin with your comments, please identify yourself by stating your name and your address and this meeting's called to order. First item on the agenda is to receive the minutes from the September 2nd, uh, 2021 meeting. I'm sorry, September 9th, it looks like. Motion received. That's probably not right. Um, September 2nd it's meeting. Um, and do we have any changes or a second? Motion. Got a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the September 2nd uh, meeting. Once you're able to, cast your votes. Okay. And it's approved. Now, oh, did you mean to vote in favor of? Okay. Yeah. Can we take that by voice vote? Is that okay for her? Okay, so that was uh, unanimous. Next item on the agenda, continuance requests or withdrawals. I think we have one. I have one, that's item five, case 14921, the applicant requests a deferral to October 7th. Okay, was anyone hoping to speak on that application? <clears throat> okay, hearing none, I think we can take a motion to continue as requested. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to continue that item as requested. Cast your votes, please. I didn't see the confirmation, but I assume that was approved. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Consent docket, seeing nothing, we'll move to items requiring a separate vote. First item, number one, case 14910, request of Johnson and Associates for a variance to permit uh, vehicle maneuvering in the right of way at 901 Southeast 5th Street. Good afternoon, Tim Johnson with Johnson Associates here on behalf of the applicant. So this is uh, land that's technically owned by the city of Oklahoma City. It's overseen by the Riverfront Authority and it's under lease with the Boathouse District. So, uh, and in addition to that, so the dashed areas that are shown on your map, the uh, will be a sublease to a new entity called Bar K. It's a uh, dog uh, bar, not for the dogs to drink, but for the humans. <laughs> um, so this is kind of an oversight uh, of the area. This is the Whitewater Rapids. There's an existing gravel lot here. This is the uh, property. Uh, currently Laird does not exist. 
and uh, Fourth Street's kind of a gravel road, and this is paved. So this Fifth Street was in, improved as part of the Whitewater project, uh, thus bringing it up to a city standard. And uh, the best access point for the dumpster for this project w was in the corner of the cul-de-sac on the lease property. And so <clears throat> you can see on this image, it's that blue square. Uh, and in order to be able to do that, we would need to have the right to maneuver in the right of way uh, because it is a, it'll be a private dumpster uh, set apart from the uh, street and sidewalk on lease property behind an enclosure. So uh, it won't be a rollout. It'll have gates that'll open. They'll stab it, empty it, and then back up and turn around. So that is the, because of our proximity to the river, and the backwater on the channel. The elevations here are uh, difficult. This has to be raised to be above a, the 100 year rainfall. This is all in the floodplain. Um, and so these areas will not be in the raised that high. They'll be able to slope that way. So there's not a good access. We have a retaining wall here uh, because the street's slightly higher than the building. Uh, this is really the only spot we could find to make it accessible to a tr uh, trash truck. Um, I, the staff pointed out a couple of favorable considerations and no unfavorable. We'd ask for your approval. Um, the only kind of question I had was just a, a little more understanding of why layered wouldn't work. Um, and I assume you've gone through the, the analysis and ruled out layered, but that was the only thing to me is just getting comfortable for why layered wouldn't work. Um, so currently, there is no layered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so layered will be paved, uh, light duty parking lot paving, and uh, more like a parking lot service drive as opposed to a public street. Um, and with all of the uh, hardscape parking, which will include all the handicap parking, will be right there in front of the building. As we, we go past the building, the property drops off very rapidly towards 4th Street. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not. I think this, what this plan shows is the, is layered going through, uh, but it actually, as, uh, this is just going to be a drive for accessibility to maintain this. It's not really going to be a street. Okay. Right. Um, and I, it will, that'll be enclosed as well, I, I think I heard you say. The dumpster will be enclosed. Yes, enclosed. Yeah. Board members, any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, I don't have anyone else signed up to speak. Is there anyone out there that wanted to speak on this application? Okay. Hearing none, I think we can take a motion. I'll move approval. Second. We've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in uh, case 14910 for the reason it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 2, case 14923, request of four corner homes for a variance to the accessory building regulations at 12901 Southwest 26th Street. Hi, how you doing? I'm the uh, director of construction for Four Corners Homes. And what we've got there, we're just trying to get a variance to move the uh, shop building up uh, past the back corner of the house instead of the uh, required five feet behind to the face of it because there is a severe slope in the backyard, a backyard going up to the property line of about five feet. So that's pretty well, uh, pretty well where the uh, building would have to go to keep the drainage, you know, going the right direction. Uh, we sent some information in uh, when we applied for the variance. We sent pictures and I don't know if you folks have them. Oh, no, I, of the uh, slope of the backyard. But from the back of the building uh, where we propose to put it, there's about three or four feet. And then the slope starts, and it goes up five feet. And 
approximately 25 feet to the back fence line. So therefore we couldn't push the building back. Is it sloped there for uh, drainage? Well, it goes, uh, there's an addition behind this addition mm -hmm. to the uh, north. I couldn't tell you the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, the fence line is about five feet up and then this all slopes back down to the back of the, you know, the back of the property, like 25 feet, and then it gets flat out to uh, 26th Street. And there is already one variance in there. I noticed today I drove through there on the corner of uh, Palio Run and uh, 27th uh, Terrace. There's already been one over there in the cul-de-sac where Palio and 27th, that gentleman there has a shop building on the corner and it is the front of his shop building, it's a large one, is, uh, is right up to the back corner. Yeah, well, he must have got a variance. He must have got a variance. <laughs> like it's a non-conforming. Yeah, shop. he might have just built it. In the I think the reason <laughs> I think the reason why he got the had to move it up because his building was so big, and I think you requires it 15 feet from the back of the building to the property line. That's as close as you can get them. I believe that's what it is. Right. So that's probably why he had to get a variance because how big his building was, or make his building smaller. So looking at this aerial, but next door to the to the lot on uh, 12901, that's a common area too. And the shop building was gonna go on the west side of that house. And so there's just a, it's not a buildable lot, it's a common area. Are those houses to the east built now? The houses to the east, okay, if you go, well the lot next door is common area, so you can't build there, and then you go to trails, well, east. trailheads, huh? East. Oh, east. east, okay, yes. There is one, I think they're pretty well, I think the one, uh, there's two houses to the east and then the third house is a house under construction we're building. And uh, I believe the, uh, I think the second house to the east actually has a shop building on it. The second house to the east, if I, I drove by there today. It has a shop building, so there's there's quite a few shop buildings in that and area. Do those properties have the same slope issue? Uh, his isn't quite as bad, but the further you get to the uh, west, the slope is more severe. Right. Um, I'll kind of tell you where I'm going with those questions. It, it's just as this area develops, I'm a little worried that everyone's going to come in here and want a variance, and which just sort of is this board telling city council that the code doesn't really matter in this area because people could just come in and get a variance for all these houses. Um, so I'm a little worried about that and this other building that's on 27th that may or may not have a variance. I mean, this is something I'm sure we raised, if that did come before us, we probably raised, is, is this gonna set a precedent for this area that everyone can come in and get a variance? Um, and maybe that's justified, I don't know. But, well, I mean, uh, as far as that goes, that street that backs up to the area to the north, that's where the most severe slope is on the west side of that area. After you get past that a block or so, then it becomes the back, you know, the two areas are pretty well about the same elevation. Right. So, so um, that wouldn't be probably a case. This is a unique case in that area because of the location of this lot. It's not really a, we build all the houses in that area. We're the only home builder in there. And this would be probably one of the most unique cases in that area. The rest of the lots are, as you go further to the east, they get, they get the backyards are flat pretty much together, or just a gentle slope. Right. But this is a unique, unique lot. And then the, uh, one of the other elements that the legislature says we have to meet um, out of the four elements. One of them is that there's a hardship. Um, and in these cases, it's, it's always a little bit of an uphill battle to establish that there's a hardship. Because um, if, if we're kind of honest, the hardship is we want a shed back there. Um, and we can debate about whether that's a hardship, but uh, I don't know if you want to address that. I know some of the board members usually ask that question, so I might as well. Right, I mean, I can't say there's a hardship. It would create a drainage problem the further we pushed it back. 
because of that slope going uphill. There's a natural swell going through the backyard, which would be roughly 20 feet off the back of the house, you know, maybe 15 that goes through all those backyards there. So it's kind of a natural path for the drainage. And then the slope starts. So common sense wise, this would be the place to put it. I'm just, you know, as a contractor, that's where I would put it. Okay. I'm not trying to create any kind of an eyesore. Or, and I think it would go well, you know, it would match the community. It's going to, you know, the, the colors of the, of the shed or the, uh, of the shop building are going to be comparable to the, to the house. So it's all going to flow aesthetically. And that's, I saw it's behind a fence too. It looked like, is that right? Pardon me? It's behind a fence, it looks like. What's well, behind the fence? Well, there's houses no. on the north side. There's well, another subdivision. This one will be behind that front Oh, fence. yeah, it's going to be behind fence. Right, yeah. It's already, yeah. The fence comes out right now in the house, I believe, to the almost to the front corner of the house. It's okay. a six-foot tall wood fence, and it's going to have double gates on it, and there's going to be a drive going from the... Uh, shop building entry all the way out to the street so i'd have a it'd have another approach out there so it's going to have its own separate driveway okay and then the height of this proposed building how high is this this building uh, the uh, plates are 10 feet you know the the walls are 10 feet high and i don't have the prints with me i believe it's got like about a 6 or 7 12 pitch roof on it okay um, board members questions or comments is this the smallest size that this shop building could be pardon me is this the smallest size that it could be um, I think what is the uh, what what do you permit in there is it 30 by 40 or a 1200 is that the is that the max in that area I'm not quite sure of that but I it well we made it wider than we normally do and made it shorter in depth so we wouldn't go back as far. We did do that. So that's one thing we did do to accommodate, you know, the lay of the land there. I asked because the chairman mentioned some of these statutory conditions that we have to find are met and one of them is that this is the minimum necessary to alleviate whatever hardship may or may not exist and so that, that's the purpose of my question. I got you. Yeah. Um, you happen to have the uh, the site plan? Any of you have the site plan to that? Do you have the site plan? Should be up. Okay. Is this up even it is concerning? well it's 24 by, by 30, 30. Yeah. Which would be yeah, it made size 720 right? feet, right? Yeah, I think 720 just... in that neighborhood. Like She's thinking four square feet. She's thinking maybe if we could it's shrink not a very it down big a little shed, bit. Actually, yeah. it's not the biggest you can put in there. I know mm -hmm. that. Well, um, any other questions or comments? Is there anyone else who wanted to speak on this application? Okay. Um, Board members, questions, comments, or a motion? I know I think I'd want it a little, a little smaller just to hit that minimum necessary. I'm not totally convinced about a hardship either, especially if it's not being used and it's not really proposed Well, use. it's probably one of the smaller shop buildings in that area. Okay. The other ones, I think the uh, 1,200 feet, I think, is a max in there. And so this is like 720. So it's okay. the one on the corner of, uh, of uh, Palio Run and 27th Street. That is a very large building. And it's right on the side of the street. So if anybody was worried about an eyesore, and it's like, it's probably 16 feet tall to the walls. And, then, and it was, you know, approved. So, and it's right on the side of the street as you turn down 27th. So the neighbors across the street where we're building three houses over there right now, actually four, are going to be looking at that guy's shed. So That doesn't sound like something we would approve. 
Huh? That doesn't sound like something we would approve. Well, Just I mean, it's there. You might want to check it out. I don't know if he, he had a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he did it without a permit, but I'm just telling you that thing is flush for the front of the uh, or the back corner of the yeah. house. No, we'll get people that will they'll, they'll just okay, throw well, it I'm up. Just, but I'm just saying, yeah. if code enforcement's allowed, watching, maybe. Yeah. Then th I don't know why this shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, that's no, what I'm saying. People will put them up, and then we've had them tear them down before, you know. So okay, but them. I'm just saying that you know. Um, but no, I understand your point. Um, Board members, we see where we are. I would just like to say I appreciate you coming for putting it up. So that's an A plus on your side for me. Are you asking a question? I'm sorry I didn't hear you. No, no, I made a statement. I said I just want to uh, say thank you for coming to the oh, board to well, ask you. before putting it up. So right. that's an A plus on your side. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Are we taking a motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll move denial of case number 14923 for the reasons that it does not meet the statutory requirements for the variance requested. Got a motion to deny the application. Do we have a second? We'll wait a couple more minutes, well, moments. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll uh, confirm with the municipal counselor, but I believe the motion fails for lack of a second. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, so we can open it up to a different motion or comments from board members. Uh, I'm okay with this, just for the fact that it's next to a common area and you know, nobody's gonna be living right next to that house. And for me, because of the uniqueness, we have Sounds like a motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> motion to approve application. And I'll second. Okay. Got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in, pull this up, case 14923 for the reason to meet statutory conditions for a variance. Once you're able to. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Close. Thank you very much. Sure. Deeply Thank appreciate it. Thank you. Item three, case 14924, is a request of Mark Abel for a variance to the setback regulations, 7416 Northwest 158th Street. Is the applicant present? you want to start by your name address and then just give us kind of a brief overview of your application? Yes, uh, my name is Mark Abel. I'm the owner of Premier Homes and uh, 520 East Memorial Road is, is our office address. Um, we built uh, the house um, on this lot um, like we do all the time. We have the corners uh, of the lot pinned. I've been building for 20 years. This is my first request for a variance and hopefully it's going to be my last. But the street has a bit of a slight indention, a cord, if you will, because it's on a corner of lot. And so we staked off all of the property pins, but there was no, and it was an oversight on our part. So the house fits within the build lines with the exception of on that cord, there's a portion of the center of the house that's about eight inches into, not the property line, but the build line. And it wasn't recognized until two days before the home was being finished, the appraiser comes out and because of that cord, that inset of the street, we've got about just a small portion of the house right in the, in the, the center of that wall that it's, a, it's, a, it's a, lo a wider setback, obviously being a corner lot, but it impedes about eight inches. Okay, 
um, I've got a it's been a while since I've been in K through 12 but the uh, application says it encroaches 1.2 feet and sounds like you're telling me eight inches is the request and so well just want to confirm because we usually like to put a number on it if, we the, if the application is 1.2, I, I like I say I measured it personally, but it, there there very well could be as it as it is a cord. Yeah. I went out there and measured, so so I would rather yeah. stay with the request of the 1.2. Um, I didn't. I had someone in my office um, help me with the. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That little that section. So abundance of caution. You'll go with 1.2. Sounds like. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Board members, any questions or comments? Okay. That was a pretty good catch for an appraiser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, in these cases, I always envision sort of the world's largest saw that can just saw <laughs> 1.2 feet. Of I have nightmares house. about that, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think this sort of fits somewhat more into what this board is for, which is sort of minimal variances to um, to different code requirements and so 1.2 feet um, into 15 I think is palatable for me so um, I don't have anyone signed up to speak does anyone else want to speak on this application hearing none board members questions comments or motion I'll move approval I've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14924 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay. Item 4, case 14899, special exception of Kevin Snow to allow home sharing at 3304 Rock Creek Road. Hello. My name is Kevin Snow with uh, 3304 West Rock Creek Road. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so, um, well, I don't know if we had a full board for your last application, so you might get just an overview of your application. Yes, yeah, so we, we occupy the residence at 3308 West Rock Creek Road, and we bought the home next door for an Airbnb a purpose. And um, it's a, we have reduced, reduced it to a four bedroom home as recommended uh, from last time. And we have increased the parking spaces to 10 parking spaces. And we have also put on our listing for um, guests to not park in the street. And so we also have um, an extra wide driveway in our home that guests can use if so need, if there is more than 10 vehicles. And I believe that was the things that we were addressing on the last um, board meeting. I guess that brings the question of the staff report on the unfavorable. Um, are they just not, the app not updated or are you just? Yeah, what? that was, that was. Was that previous? That, no, that's accurate. Okay. Um, that was sort of one of my bigger issues with the application and I hate to do this to you, but one of my issues with the application was it's a pretty large home sharing request um, pretty large property, a lot of people. Um, usually those, some neighbors don't care, some neighbors do, but my issue was um, that, yeah. yeah. We did reduce the number of guests to 14. Sure, no, that, 16 to, and I understand that, yeah. and I think that that definitely helps your application. My issue was none of this information was in the staff report, and so, my issue was one of notice to the community and to the neighbors particularly of what actually is going in here. And basically where we sit now is in the application, there's no, there, there was a, in the original application, there was no information provided on how many rooms and how many people and that kind of thing. And then you came here and we gave you some feedback and one of the pieces of feedback was to update that so that it could be incorporated into the staff report so that if anyone wanted to see what this was going to be, they could look on the agenda, see the staff report, know exactly what's going on. The only thing we have is just an email after we already received the staff report, and so therefore could not be included in the staff report, 
updating us on the reduction of the, the number of people and the number of bedrooms and the parking issues. So I think my issue is one of, of notice and I unfortunately still stand where I did last time where I'm not particularly comfortable approving this until what is actually going to be presented to us gets into the staff report and the community gets to see what that is going to be okay. and gets an opportunity to object or support. They might support. Um, but right now they have a notice that says there's a home sharing exception and then there's no other information provided to them. We have information, but they don't. So um, that's, that's my only concern. The board might not have as big of an issue with that uh, as I do, but I think for me, I, I would think how this would go is the staff takes this updated information that you've emailed to us, puts it into a staff report okay. um, that comes out in a timely way and the neighbors receive a new notice okay. and then it's, it's re-noticed with an updated information and everything and then we can vote on it. And I think at that point, it doesn't sound like, you know, the neighbors have been noticed twice and no one showed up, no one submitted anything. So it doesn't seem like you'll have a problem at that point, but that would make me more comfortable in approving the application. So. Okay, so do I request a delay for, till October? Potentially, the board might be comfortable now and I, I've been outvoted before, so mm. board members, are we, any questions or comments on that? No, that's why I brought up the yeah. issue, so yeah. Okay. It sounds like, I'm, I'm seeing some shaking heads at least, so um, it sounds like a, a continuance to the next meeting um, and a long enough time that would allow a new notice to go out and an updated staff report. So could that be the next meeting? It, okay, so October 7th is the next meeting. Okay, that's fine. And that's plenty of time for the notices, right, to go out and the staff report to get updated. Is there anything, I guess while we're all here, we can knock all of this out. The email that we received from you um, that updated everything, is there anything you're, you want to change on that or can we, can city staff take this email and incorporate it into yes. their staff report? Yes, you may. Okay. Um, I think we can do that then. I can update the application if I made any errors or omissions and I'll be happy to do that, anything okay. that I need to do okay. to cooperate with the, pro the process. I would probably reach out to city staff maybe after this meeting and make sure okay. everything's buttoned up for in the staff report and then in the notice. Uh, board members, again, while we're here, is there anything you wanted to speak to the applicant about now so that he, we don't come back with more issues <laughs> at the next meeting? <laughs> So the size has been reduced, um, I think it was from 20 to 14? It was originally a 16, and we okay. reduced it to 14. So from 16 to 14, Yes. was it five bedrooms down to four? Right. And then um, parking, I think you're gonna limit it to um, off-street parking only and up to 10 vehicles, I think you heard, I heard you say? 10 vehicles uh, on that particular lot because of the rear load garage that has the for that, for Quail Creek, there's a lot of rear load garage homes, and so you drive actually behind the house and park to get into the garage. Okay. So there's enough space back there for four cars. Okay. Um, the email says eight plus, so maybe in the um, staff report we'll say 10 just so there's clarity. Okay. Um, and then, board members, any other questions you had that we can maybe resolve now or? Okay. So. Oh, it sounds like there's been a continuance request. Do we want a, a motion yeah. to continue until October 7th? I'll move to uh, continue case to October 7th. Okay. I'll second. Motion and second to continue case 14899 to October 7th, 2021. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's been continued. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Sure. Thank you. Item 6, case 14922, special exception of Caitlin and Scott Archer to allow home sharing at 49.15 Larissa Lane. Ladies, mind if we remove our masks? Is that okay? Y'all are just the closest. <laughs> Thank you, hello. Um, I'm Scott Archer, this is my wife, Caitlin Archer. We live at 4904 Larissa Lane. We live just catty corner, um, directly southeast of the subject property. We're here requesting a five-year special exception for home sharing at this property. Um, and as I mentioned, we live catty corner. It's a two bed, two bath, 1700 square foot. We're going to advertise for six people, six guests, and there's ample off street parking. The driveway is actually uh, 120 feet long, so it's quite substantial. 
and we'd like to tell you about a house named Faye. So a little over two years ago, we were newlyweds and we had the opportunity to move to the Netherlands for three months for a work assignment. The company that we worked for rented a house in a small town an hour outside of Amsterdam named Lunteren. It is common in the Dutch culture for families to name their homes, much like Americans name their cars, and the house that we lived in was named Faye. While there, we got to live like the Dutch. We had our own car, we shopped at the local grocery store, Albert Hein, we got to know the neighbors, one of them even offered us his tandem bike to use. We celebrated their national holiday, King's Day, and we would often walk to the town's pub in the evenings, which is where we learned that many Dutchmen actually wear wooden shoes, believe it or not. This experience totally changed the way that we viewed travel. We learned it is not about seeing the, destina the destination, it's about living the destination. We have always been interested in property as an investment. We both love to build and fix things, and we just recently completed a renovation on our own home at 4904. But our experience with Faye is why we want to do home sharing, and she is why we've named the house at 4915 Faye. Faye is more than a side hustle or a way for us to make a quick buck. Faye is our passion project and our way of sharing our state, our city, and the neighborhood that we are proud to be a part of with others. So we put a lot of research and reflection into uh, our own house rules, our self-imposed house rules. Uh, we have three pillars. That's vetting for responsible guests, respect for the home and community, and respect for nature. In vetting for responsible guests, our primary um, uh, point there is that we have a 21-25 rule where the booking person has to be over the age of 21, and if they're in the local metro area and they want to book, they have to be over the age of 25. We've seen some research that shows if someone's doing something you probably don't want them to do at your home share, it's likely that they're under the age of 25 and a local themselves. So I'll stop you there and hopefully it doesn't throw you off, but um, sure. I don't have a home sharing property. I assume whenever a prospective renter reaches out or makes a reservation, it tells you where they're from? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. it? Okay, so you'll know exactly where they're from. And it's linked to their account, which is where right. they get feedback and all that. And there's additional measures. Uh, other hosts on the common platforms will review the guests and say that they had a good experience uh, as having them as a guest. So mm -hmm. those are all gonna be things that we look for um, in addition to putting out very clearly um, these rules that you know, we take very seriously ourselves, we're neighbors, we want this to be best for everybody, um, the guests and our community as well. Um, moving on in, in having respect for the home and community, the primary thing we're gonna do there is uh, be aware of ex excessive noise. So we found technology out there called Noise Aware. It's a device that can be in and outside the home that we're going to use. It measures the volume levels of the activities and it can notify the guests directly when they're getting a little bit excess noise and it can notify us directly if that's sustained for a period of time and we can take uh, corrective action. Um, of course, parking off street uh, as I mentioned prior. I'll stop you again there, sorry. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the uh, noise aware, what's the, I'm just kind of curious what the cost is on that. Is there a subscription method that is ongoing? You have to buy the hardware, which is a couple hundred dollars, and then there is a yearly subscription, which is an additional couple hundred dollars. Okay. But, I mean, all in, you're just looking at two or three hundred dollars a year, and it gives you a lot of peace of mind. And we're kind of nerds. I mean, <laughs> the amount of things that it can track is amazing. Like. It can detect if smoke alarms yeah, have gone off, yeah. um, if they change the thermostat outside your parameters. So oh, okay. it's they pretty smoke cool in stuff. the home. Okay. It's I, really neat. I'm curious just as a kind of cost benefit because one of the things city council said we could do is impose any restrictions that we think are reasonable. And so I'm just curious of, you know, the cost of this, if and there might be a different case where we might want to impose a condition like this. So I appreciate you giving that information. Absolutely. And then the third pillar that's important to us is a respect for nature. Uh, Faye sits on a pond. It's a shared pond between two properties and we live directly across the street from this pond. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. We love waking up to it in the morning. We wanna make sure that our guests are very aware of that element of their stay and uh, that they're comfortable with it and that they respect the nature. Um, 
obviously no swimming, no boating, no fishing. There's not going to be a boat even available to them. Um, don't feed the wildlife and you know, be careful of the wildlife. Harming them through negligence or on purpose is very serious to us and um, could result in cancellation. So um, in conclusion, we think that these uh, self-imposed rules are going to provide an optimal experience for our guests and um, the community. Uh, and just like we lived, uh, we lived the destination at a house named Faye in the Netherlands. We're excited to be host to allow our guests to live the destination here in Oklahoma City at our house named Faye. Right. Thank you. Um, board members, questions or comments of the applicant? Can you give like a class to everyone that wants to do this in our community? <laughs> We've done a lot of research. We definitely, this is a huge personal investment to us. I mean, we're young and this is substantial. And so we've definitely done as much homework as possible. And really it's our love and passion for travel that has fueled this because it just, it totally changed our life whenever we got to experience that. So we'd be happy to offer classes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you live adjacent across the street. Did I hear it's that correctly? It's catty corner to the southeast. It might be easier to see on the, the aerial. Uh, or the on the overall image. Oh, probably. There we go. Uh, yes, right to the east of the inn that on Larissa one. Lane. That yeah. has a square hole in it. Like that. So we have a full view of the house, the backyard, the pond. We recently installed uh, uh, surveillance cameras on our own home that perfectly captures both the street coming from both directions and also the pond. And right. that's just to protect the neighborhood. But also, if there was ever um, an incident with the pond, it is fully viewed now. And can you talk about the, or sort of reiterate, your restrictions relating to the pond? Basically, the pond is off limits besides looking at it and enjoying the nature. So right. there is a little dock, and there's a deck that's attached to the house that they will be able to use. but. They are not allowed to fish, they cannot boat, they cannot swim, basically just, it's supposed to be an oasis, just a quiet retreat. Mm -hmm. We do not envision, you know, parties or large groups of people, and we would not allow that. But this isn't the type of house for that anyway. We see medical professionals because we are very close to Integris as well as other hospitals in the area. Um, people who are coming into town for treatment, we see that as a fantastic option instead of staying at a hotel. They can have a more comfortable, quiet oasis. Um, you know, business travelers, couples that are wanting to get away for a staycation or something, and small families that are coming into town for an event. That's kind of our target market. Um, and we will also be pricing it at a little bit higher price point where we just don't anticipate, you know, a large group of young kids coming to book this. And like I said, we wouldn't allow that because we really value this home and the neighborhood. We're members of it. We care well, about what it's happens. Not, it's not even big enough, really, for, for a party. No. I, no. Think. I mean, we've got, we heard one the other week that I think they could have held 40 people or something. I mean, it's a. Oh my goodness. I think we watched that. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> and so it, I don't think this is really big enough. It's not so much partying I would be concerned with. Um, the uh, West property, to the pond there, what is that? I I'm probably sorry? To the west of the pond there? Is That's that a the condo complex. Okay. They've got their own um, pond and fountain. Um, it's completely obstructed. You see very dense um, trees uh, going north and south. Um, there's no visuals, there's no auditory relationship to that condo complex. Okay. Okay. And then in the application, did you, um, get a chance to see the protest letter and did you want to we address did. that at all? Yeah, we okay. saw it um, and we are more than happy to discuss it. Um, that evening I called Mrs. Chow. We're um, very close to the Chows uh, as we are with many of our neighbors. Um, I was thinking perhaps she was unaware of our self-imposed rules and the um, lengths we've gone to in setting this up. Um, but she's known for a very long time that we intend to do the um, this home sharing. Um, I was a little bit surprised because they've never um, seemed like that would be an issue to them. Um, 
on the phone and, and in the protest letter, it seemed like their main concern was uh, what they feel is a lack of barrier between the two houses. Um, I looked into it a little bit more, and the boundary, if you, if you measure the pond between the two houses from shore to shore, it's 97 feet. So this is quite a substantial pond as a barrier between the two houses. Um, again, no swimming, no fishing, no boating. Um, it never dries up. It's, it's a substantial pond. Um, there is to the far west, uh, on the far west side of the pond, there's uh, where it's very densely wooded, uh, that is land there that uh, has a fence. It's, it's a chain link fence there. So that is additional barrier. So is there, I guess I've, I misread the site plan originally. Where's their property in relation to the subject property? They're directly to the south of us, okay. that one. Okay, yes. that's what. So okay. they do share the pond with us as well. And we've been working a lot with them, cleaning up the pond, cleaning up their own backyard, um, just really trying to make it a centerpiece for the neighborhood, because we're very proud <laughs> of this. If you guys have never driven down Larissa and Morris, I highly recommend it, because it's just, it's a really cool special yeah, place. Yeah, it seems like it. I need to check it out. Yeah, and you're, right in the heart of Northwest Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's, yeah. And I'm very familiar with, I've lived all around 50th. I just don't know that I've been down that street before. We're the same totally way. Yeah. We're the same way. We've grown up around the area. Our parents both live about three miles away from us, and we grew up in the area, and we never knew that it was there. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool. How far is it, um, kind of the shortest distance there? How far is it across the pond to, to there? Uh, you mentioned shore to shore, and you may have already answered this, but how far is it from your shore to their shore and kind of the shortest the area. shortest distance, I mean, between the two houses vertically, north south, is that 97 feet. I mean, it does taper off to the west and, yeah. and, and cl it closes in, and then there's a, a tiny little piece of land where it's densely wooded where you're hovering there, and there's a chain link fence in the dense woods. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, and these are sometimes difficult because we, we certainly don't want to ruin any um, relationships between neighbors and I, my hope is that regardless of the outcome of this proceeding the neighbors are still friendly oh, one absolutely. way or the other right um, and i'd like to express too that it, very early on before we knew that this was a concern of, of theirs um, we've discussed that fence i mean it, it is a, just a chain link fence but it is very dense over there but um, in both of our benefits, we've talked about increasing, you know, the, the size of the fence, make it a little bit more beautiful, um, which is one of the reasons why we're um, surprised that they wrote in a letter of protest about some of the things that we have been very open and willing to cooperate on. But um, And really, the only reason why we've not taken steps to even start those improvements is we currently have a tenant, so the lady that we actually purchased the home from is still living in the house and she's leasing it from us while her house is being built. And so that's supposed to be through the end of the year. So we're just trying to get ahead. But mm -hmm. we have lots of plans on improving the property once she actually moves out and vacates the property. We're walking a fine line of you know, being landlords to a neighbor. And so we're trying to be very respectful of her space and her time um, while she's still living there. So that is why we've not yet made some of those improvements, but it'll definitely get done. Yeah. Um, questions or comments, board members? Okay. Um, I see some people here, and this is the last item, so I assume they're here to speak on this item. So uh, we'll call you back up after after that. Thank you. And then I, I saw you come in a little bit late, so you might not have heard the whole thing or the procedure, but normally you'll fill out a white form if you want to speak. Since you came late and there's no other matters, I assume you're here to speak on the next item. So if you'd like to come speak on this item, just start by introducing yourself by name and address, uh, and then just give an overview of your statement. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> my name is Yuk Chow. Uh, I'm the owner of the, uh, uh, the neighbor across the uh, pond. Uh, we're here today, uh, we just kind of uh, get some evidence showing that the, the, the current applicant um, is not quite ready for the permit for the Airbnb. Um, I, I would like to bring out two things. is a security issue with the fencing and also um, some of the uh, 
uh, property definition, which is called a borderline, was not very clear. Let me bring up some of the history of this property. This two property was owned by the same owner years ago, and it was divided into uh, two different land, different property. So as you see that line right there, that is an imaginary line. It never have a fence on top of it. And you see that um, the line, the dotted line that landed on the corner of the uh, land, the other side. It never have a fence there, but there, there, there is a fence there. I want to show the Evelyn. It's a very unsecure fence. I don't know if I can show this. Yeah. Just Someone can just lean over. And that okay. fence is not even on the dotted line. It's, if you, will, if you will imagine there's a, there's a, uh, a point of the dotted line versus the water, that's where the fence was built, like go straight. So it's like a triangle. I would estimate about 15 to 2,000 square feet of land was, was in their property. And that's why I want to just want to bring up. This is not going to be okay if they were using it for commercial purpose. And at the minimum, we should get that fence cleared up and uh, put the secure fence. Up so is that a, does that mean? A, are you thinking a new chain link fence or a wood like a I six think foot? I think I will I'll propose a uh, uh, wood privacy fence. Okay. And. Um, I'll let, I'll let my wife talk about, you know, how we're concerned about um, we have three children and they're kind of young and uh, we have a bad experience with people at their go on vacation or living in Airbnb property and noise generated and privacy issue. As you pointed out before, the um, direct line from, from their uh, deck to our deck, it's ultimately speaking probably about 50 to 70 feet because they have a deck protruding out to the pond. So like conversation why you can hear, like we'll just have a coffee this morning, I can hear my neighbor, she talking on the phone. I can hear everything she said, but we don't care because we, we know each other. So I'll, I'll, I'll let my wife, uh, Ben Chow, just give her some of the concern of uh, what we think that uh, at this time, I think it's premature to okay. ban the permit. I mean, uh, Mr. Archer present your best case scenario, but however, the reality is a little different than you think. Okay. Let her speak. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Van Chow. So we have moved there about four years. So we find out that the property they built together, that's the same owner. So they built two houses with the opening view. With At night, when the light's up, we can see each other. You wear short, whatever, you can see each other with the big <laughs> door. I can see my neighbor, Kevin, too. So when she goes to sleep, whatever. So she said, like, Van, I can see you too. Whatever you do in your kitchen at night, it's very opening. So I was worried. It's kind of like, it's not private. If we have a normal property, we can put the fence up, then I'm totally fine. We are landlord, so we know that so many things just happen out of control as we want tenants to do this and that. They just do when they, whatever they want. And we find out it might be too late to prevent. So that's what I will worry. We have open pond, open, they can just, sometimes they get drunk. They can swim over. We have Kevin Doc been over our property before. Many times they get down and then I got scared so I had to take my dog inside. They just run around in my yard. So that's not really a good thing at first. And now we have the back with the movable fence. So my dog kind of big so I don't want anything happen they see new people all the time, so he would bark, and I never know what can happen because a fan is not secure. So the minimum, I would love to have a secure fence so my dog cannot see new people. 
So he's got a big 100 pounds, so he can get over the fence right now. Okay. And okay. also my kids are young. They, they're very shy. They don't want to see other people look at her. She said, I'm not going to go outside, mommy. If they have tenon over there, they don't want to play outside. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. So, so to sum it up, I mean, uh, this is on the, on the I mean, business level. In personally, we love Scott and Katie. They're probably the best neighbor you can ever get. But however, from the, from the business perspective, and we just feel like we've been used for their financial gain because it is a lot of money you can generate by renting out a property. I mean, it's probably the best Airbnb you can ever get in the area. I would have paid top dollar for that, staying. Yeah, yeah. And so, they also mentioned, I don't know if it, if it helps um, you, but before you arrived, they mentioned uh, investment in a noise monitoring um, program that detects if it gets it is, over a certain level. It is level. a preventative measure, but in the reality, I mean, I've been, I've been to, you know, we, we, we have several rent houses, and we, we, we went to, you know, vacation home as well. It's, it's not easy to control. You know, if people want to throw a party, they will throw a party. And, and just by calling the authority or notifying the landlord, it's just, it's just hassle for me. That instead of, a, you know, I like to enjoy peaceful living. Every time I come home, it's, uh, everything will be the same. Kids are home safe, you know. That's the only thing we're asking for. But um, I don't want to just give to, uh, to make a case of uh, someone try something out new and we won't, we will be the, you know, TEPS object, you know, to see if it's work or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that we consider is um, whether the proposed use is going to be different than what they could otherwise use the property for. So right now, and you sort of mentioned this, but right now they have renters in there and the renters are allowed to fill that house up, I assume, with however many people and, and throw a party or, or whatever. And so th that's just something I'm thinking about. And I think you addressed it a little bit by saying these are going to be people coming in that you don't know every couple of days. There'll be different people there. And so that's a little bit different from having a renter there. But It's a possibility. Yeah. Um, but best case scenario is that they have one, client, uh, one tenant a, a year. It, it possibly they can have the same tenant for a year. Right now, Kevin, she's a previous owner, so we know her. We're mm -hmm. friends with her. She and I move in. So she is tenant, but she's the owner and have two dogs, so we've been friends. So not a problem that she feel okay wearing pajamas coming outside, and I, I do the same. But I don't feel the same with, you know, some different men I don't know. I wear pajamas, walk around, and water my water, and it's, it's pretty close yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is that the city council in passing this home sharing ordinance said that we could um, impose a condition, this is condition, or item number seven, I guess, of the things we can do. It says, if necessary to protect the general public and to protect the use of the neighboring property from potential loss of use or decrease in land value, the Board of Adjustment may require additional site-proof screening or landscaping uh, according with the provisions of the code. And so we could, if we want, require them to put a, a six-foot fence up there that's site-proof uh, if we thought that would sort of help here. So that's something we can do. I'm not saying that we would do that or that it would address all of your concerns because that still wouldn't address the concern of people looking across the pond and being able to see. Um, but that would address one, that chain link fence that doesn't really, you're saying doesn't really do very much right now. So that would address that concern. Um, board members, any questions or comments of the, the protests? I have, a, I have a question about the fence. So that fence, they mentioned it's in a heavily wooded area. So even if there was a privacy fence, I guess, I don't know what that, like eight feet tall or something like that, does that address your privacy concern or just the security concern? Both. 
Okay, so so yeah. if that fence over went up, they is, wouldn't is, be is, able is, to see your the, property. Yeah. Is no, that over correct? there is not less of a privacy because it's it's in a corner of the property. You, you don't have a direct line to the to your house, so it's more security. As long as there's six you know six foot fence, secure, not easy to climb over or break in. That's fine. And also, my dog couldn't get over or see some okay. people. Mm -hmm. He get nearby the Sick. fence, and it yeah. might scare her tandem. And just so I understand correctly, particularly after that question. The fence is sort of on this map, right where it says subject, where that's pointing? Yeah, uh, the, the fence, as, as you would point out, almost, the, the fence right now is almost at the, uh, at the line of the subject. Right, where it's pointing? Uh, there's, a, there's a line right there. There's, you know, it's like go, uh, almost a perp, uh, perpendicular yeah, to the house. on the property line, right? Yeah, yep. on the property line, go, go cut, like, cut a piece of pie away. Okay. So that's, that's why we, we we want to get a pin survey, and we want to get that right um, property line. It's a good point. Yeah. So we did call him up before that we would okay sharing the cost to get the survey and the fans up. So okay. it will be benefit for both of us. Yeah, that's a good point because that chain link fence might not be in the right spot, and you might yeah, be taking that's, someone's. That's, yeah, that's the main concern. So that's why I want to uh, yeah. come, come in here to bring, bring it up to make that record straight. Okay. Um, that, so that addresses maybe half of the concerns, and then you'd still have maybe a concern of looking across the pond. Um, so for that concern, I mean, I'll tell you where I'm thinking right now. I'm sort of thinking of a very short, potentially a very short special exception. They say it's not even going to be ready until the end of the year because they have a, a tenant there. And so, you know, maybe six months after that, just to see if you do have these same concerns with the people coming in and out. Because it might be the case that the the Airbnb tenants don't even go outside. They they don't even go to the pond. Exactly. You know, it might not be an issue. So I, I'm kind of thinking a short a short trial period after the fence gets put up. Because I do think you're right about the fence. Uh, and it, they've you might not have been here for this, but they already mentioned that they were wanting to repair that fence and maybe replace it. So that doesn't seem like there's too much disconnect there. So that's kind of where I am. I mean, does that how does that sound to to you all? Sounds perfect for me. Okay. I just it's have fine. a little question. Just a bad scenario where the tenant might, you know, get drunk, falling down, and it float over or whatever yeah. to my lines. Yeah. You know, something happened like that. Yeah. That so, worry me. Yeah, a couple of things. One, they mentioned they've got cameras from their property that can see this property. Two, they've got the noise detection stuff. Three, for the Airbnb tenants or renters or whatever they're called, they get feedback after every stay from the landlord. And so if something like that happens, they would get knocked on Airbnb. And most people, for that reason, don't act up because they want to keep their reputation on Airbnb good. Right? And so that sort of helps there. And then finally, if there's anything you're ever concerned about with this Airbnb, if it gets approved, or anything that happens in the city, the city has an action line that you can call and say, I, I saw this in my neighborhood, I think it's a problem. And I think if they get, what is it, more than two of these, they have to come back before us and we can withdraw their special exception and say, sorry, it didn't work out, you're, you're not monitoring this close enough and so we're revoking your special exception. So those are all some kind of protective measures for you to think about. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily stop the drunk person from getting drunk and doing something, but those are just things to think about. Uh, and then the other thing to think about is, for us at least, is that can happen at any home sharing. I mean, even if you have a 10-foot fence in between the properties, right. you can still have a drunk person that climbs the fence and passes out in your yard or something. Um, and so... It's happened to me. Yeah, apparently it's happened to Mr. Privet. Well, not me personally, but someone in my yard. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> um, okay, board members, any questions or comments? So far before? Yeah, also the owners live. I mean, that's true. Some far away for that. that and for and me. candidly, they do seem like some of the more responsible um, owners that we've seen up here. You get some Airbnb hosts that, you know, they might have 10 properties and they don't care about the neighborhood, they don't care about anything. Most people I know, they're, they're not even living in the state. Right, just, right, like, out of state, you know, and, and they're just investing and making money. They live right there and are very invested. So, you know, we have no problem personally with, with our neighbor. 
Yeah. We, we're we friend, but we you know, love them. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't want them to hate us like you know like this, but we just gotta do it right. No, and I understand, and I'm glad you voiced those concerns. Um, I always like hearing from the neighbors more than anything because they're right there in the neighborhood. And we try our best to think what it would be like to be a neighbor, but it's best if we're, you know, I don't know what it's like drinking coffee on the, on the deck. How about they move in there and rent the other house? I'll be happy. I know, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might propose that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I love for them to live next door. Yeah. I don't mind, they walk to my property yeah. totally. Yeah. We just trust each other. Yeah, you could take down that fence at that point maybe, but yeah, okay. Um, well, any other questions or comments, board members? Okay. Well, thank you for your comments. Thank you for the time. Thank you all. And we'll bring the, the applicant back up. So, um, potentially to help you, it seems like you're in a pretty good spot now. Um, so, maybe keep that in mind as you make your comments and then particularly maybe comment on the fence issue and see if we have any agreement there. Absolutely, the, the fence we have agreement on is something that we've been wanting to do. Okay. But um, to be clear, we are just talking about a fence at the wooded section, not a fence that's going around the pond. It's very correct. important yeah. that we... Okay. Correct, yes. No. Yeah, because we don't want, I mean, it would just... Yeah, yeah, it would kind of take away everything that's special about the house. Yeah, yeah. So, of course. no, we have no issues putting up a new fence. Like I said, we've been walking the tightrope with our tenant that is a neighbor, and we just are trying to respect her. Um, we've been very open that those are improvements that we want to do and we will do. We're just waiting, you know, for her to move out so that we can do it on the best terms for everybody. Okay. So, now, um, just to kind of quickly address a shorter time frame for the exception. I definitely understand why in some circumstances you would want to do that. I do ask that you would consider a longer period for us because this is definitely not just, you know, a way to make a quick dollar for us. This is something that we have a full business plan for. It's something where we plan on, you know, creating partnerships with local restaurants and artisans and museums. We're trying to create an experience. And on top of that, there's a substantial amount of investment that we still have to make as far as furnishing the home, getting it to the standard for an Airbnb. And it is a, it's substantial to us. It is not, you know, we don't have that much money to just throw out. And so that's why we're asking for a little bit longer time um, so that we can really make these dreams a reality. And we can go into it knowing that we're making this large investment with confidence because I, I hope that we've conveyed that we are responsible, we try to do the right thing. I think we had four neighbors right in support of us and we were just like flabbergasted. We were crying when we were read, reading them because they're like, you know, how cool is it that we are part of a community where there's that much support? And I just hope that you guys see that in general in the neighborhood, we do have a lot of people who know we're trying to do the right thing. They trust us and yeah. we love we love the neighborhood. So sure. I, I I understand that. I just to to maybe and it sounds like you've done some some research on um, what we do here, but I would speculate that the average that we grant here is two to three years. I know. I saw a five year so five, though. Five, a four year seven months. Yeah, four year I seven months. That. We we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it has I happened. Told you we were nerds. But I think <laughs> but I think those are sort of the exception. No one's gotten close to ten years, right? Um, but no, and we would never five years would be the longest and why I'm not comfortable with five years is I'm on sort of the fence anyway with this application, just given the unusual nature um, with the pond being right there. And so I'm definitely not. I'm close just not to a sure longer. how. I mean, the, the the houses have been situated the way they've been for a long time. Um, a long if, time before home sharing was a thing. Absolutely. It was even contemplated. So I and just don't think that you know, the if, design here is is what city council potentially had in mind whenever they passed this home sharing. I think what they had in mind is your typical neighborhood with a six, eight foot fence in between the properties. It's not really a big deal if one's home sharing in certain areas because you might not even know about it as a neighbor. 
We have all kinds of other concerns to worry about, but that's what I think city council had in mind. And so for here, we're sort of in uncharted territory and the board might be comfortable with a longer one, but I'm definitely not com comfortable with a longer one. Uh, in I, this case. I just think that, uh, you know, whether uh, uh, someone other than ourselves had purchased it and moved in, you know, there'd be a similar situation. You know, people are in there, people are in and out of the house. Um, whether we have a long-term renter, um, they're in and out of the house. I mean, the function of the house is the same. It's just that it's used in a different application that's uh, in accordance with all the laws and standards and our own. Uh, I, I understand, rules. but to me, I'm compelled by this argument that it's at least the same person every time, and you can build a relationship with that person that's across the pond. When it's home sharing, you can't do that. And so she's right, it's gonna be a random person across the pond doing random things and that, that to me makes me sort of pump the brakes a little bit. Not to say that it's gonna be even an issue. Right. It might not be an issue, but um, in these sorts of cases, it, it seems to me that if you're as successful as you say you're going to be, a one year special exception is not gonna be a problem because you'll come back in one year and everything will go perfectly and you'll say, see, we were right. Grant us a longer term. And you have a pretty compelling argument at that point. So that's, that's kind of where I am, um, board members, Questions or comments on that? I have two comments. Um, first of all, you said it's not ready to rent out at this point. Is that correct? That's, That's correct. correct. So how long would it be before it is ready? We're hoping, so if everything goes right, which right now in construction, it's crazy. So we don't know if this timeline's accurate. Her builder gave her a closing date of the end of December. And so we expect another month for us to do a refresh of the house, get it furnished. It might even be two months, honestly. So I think best case scenario would be January, um, probably more realistically February. So my question is to- One year, five months? Chairman, chairman, <laughs> if we grant it for one year, right. what date will that date start? Would it start? 10 days I think from 10 now. days from days today. from now, which so, means they would only have seven months. Right, right. And we'd factor that in. I mean, okay. I, that's sort of where I was anyway. Is okay, so that's my first concern. And then my second one is something that you said that kind of didn't sit right with me when um, you said we were looking at forming partnerships with other businesses. And that kind of takes out of the area of what home sharing is all about in my mind's eye. So, so just to kind of elaborate on that, what I mean is It's more we, of like an advertising. It, it is. So like a relation, you, like there's restaurants around the area and you provide the information at your Airbnb so they know to go there. And, right. So that's what you were talking about? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, well, thank you for If there's made in Oklahoma products, like soaps and, and things of that nature, right. having them there and advertising them and, and, yeah. and showing what Oklahoma's great. Yeah, right? no, that makes sense to me. I appreciate that clarification because when you said that, that threw me for a loop. I was like, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. So I have a couple of comments. One, I don't take back what I said. I do think that you guys would be great to teach classes on this to people in our community that want to do this. You guys have obviously done research, been very diligent, and are very conscientious owners. But I would say the same about the neighbors. I wish all the neighbors were like these neighbors because they seem equally conscientious and have done their research as well. And so I'm opposed to a long, Airbnb, or a long um, special exception period because for the same reasons that you want it, that's why they wouldn't want it, because it locks you in. It gives you five years of certainty that I have this opportunity to do this for five years. If something does go wrong, which we don't know if it will or if it won't, regardless of how conscientious you are about selecting visitors, they're stuck for five years, and potentially stuck for five years. And so for that reason, that's why I'm opposed to longer than probably a year and maybe six months or something, 18 months or something, because, because of that. Um, I mean, again, the uniqueness of, of the property and all that, I agree with what the chairman said. I think this, the same reason that you guys love living there and love it so much is why they love living there and love it so much. And yes, I understand you wanna share it with other people and all of that, but it does create, it's not the same use that you would otherwise use it for. Like you said, we could rent it for six months to a short-term renter. That's true, but that's six months of the same person. It's not every two weeks having a different family in there or person in there or whatever. So. I can see both sides of this, but I would definitely be opposed to five years, and certainly I think I'd be opposed to anything beyond 18 months, um, just because 
for, for the same reasons. I mean, in, in fairness, I think it's, they've raised some legitimate points. There is a lot of unique characteristics about this property. So that's kind of where I am. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, what is the board's perspective on the fence issue? The, um, what city council said we could do was impose conditions in specifically including site proof screening and I didn't think we'd ever use that but it sounds like we might have a case where we would so to and me it sounds like they're agree yeah so, so. It, it, but it would be putting that into the special exception so it's a condition that you can't use it as uh, home sharing until that fence goes up basically. I guess I just on that part I just don't get how that where that fence is and replacing that is any kind of uh, benefit I, for the what we're what we're talking about what I how what this is at least and they can correct me if I'm wrong but what I saw was you can use that fence line to make your way to the neighbor's property right now because that chain link fence is so insufficient and so people could easily get over there or the dog could easily get over there or whatever but putting up a, a thicker one prevents that from happening is kind of what I yeah, took from that that's, that's why I have my backyard fence in it's yeah. a major concern of mine too when um, the neighbors mention the fence and their dog possibly getting over it because if something were to happen to one of your tenants that's staying there, that's a liability. So therefore you want to alleviate the possibility of that happening completely. I, I don't want to make them build a fence to keep their neighbor's dog in though. Yeah, thank I mean. you. <laughs> well, that was definitely a thought that we had as well. I mean, we took over this home May 5th and no action has been made to change the fence. And it was honestly us who was driving, improving the fence, mostly for the Airbnb. And so, I mean, we have no objection yeah. if the okay. Charles would like to build a fence themselves as well. I mean, we're reasonable people. <laughs> well, if it, I guess the issue for us is um, whether well, the board would want to, want to impose that as a condition of granting the special exception. In which case, it's not really up to us to say who builds what where. We would just say, before you can have home sharing, there needs to be a six-foot wooden site-proof fence where there's currently a chain-link fence. Uh, well, know. and again, not to throw up red flags, but it seems like the neighbors are pretty well uh, neighborly. And I did hear this mention, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we will be more than happy to help pay for the fence. So that may be a conversation you guys may want to have and we may not have to impose anything. <laughs> I just, I may not have heard that, but I thought I did. Yeah. And, well, and just for clarity, the chain link fence, is that only on that little diagonal section that goes east to west or does it go north south there on that? It goes east to west. Okay. It's that little piece there then, right there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because if we put in there, replace the chain link fence with a wooden fence, I just want to make sure that's clear and there's not chain link elsewhere that binds you to things that we didn't intend to bind you on. So, yeah. okay. Uh, well, board, board members, I mean, I, that condition makes sense to me. Yeah, east west fence, for sure. Yeah, okay. Um, and then a period of time, it sounds like 18 months is the longest I've heard. I don't know if anyone wants shorter or longer. That makes that. sense because you don't know if you can go buy lumber. You don't know what a surveyor's schedule is. Yeah. And three months, six months. That's true. You may not be able to buy lumber or sinks or appliances. So yeah. I could live with 18 months. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the, probably the self-imposed conditions in the application get incorporated into the special exception? Okay. Yeah. Um, and is that, I assume, I assume that's not going to be a deal breaker for you all because it's your own conditions, but as you've probably seen in your research, um, we usually have folks incorporate their own. Okay. Yep. Okay. Board members, any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, anything from uh, the Chows before we continue? Is there anything further? Okay. Uh, I think we're ready for a motion. I'll move approval of case number 14922 um, with the condition that the listing include the self-imposed um, house rules and uh, pond and wildlife rules that the applicant has proposed. 
further condition that there be a six foot, at least minimum six foot wooden fence to replace the current chain link fence on the, was that east west? Yeah. The east west fence uh, for a period of 18 months. I'll second. Okay. And just to clarify, site proof wooden fence? Yes. For that? Okay. Um, Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the special exception in case 14922 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a special exception uh, on the condition that the, the applicant include the self-imposed conditions in the application um, for a period of 18 months and replaces the chain link east-west fence with a at least six foot site proof wooden fence. Once you're able to cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have no other items on in that section of the agenda. We'll move to additional items. I don't have anything. Communications and board reports. I don't have anything. Citizens to be heard. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Don't see any. Other business? Board members, any other business? Okay. Yeah. We are adjourned.